All right, cool beans. Hope you guys did enjoy that small montage. I'm Hex. I'm finally going to be going over my cheese part. I mean, Magpar PVP build for the Necron chapter update. Let's just get out of the way. This is one of the cheesiest builds out there. The only reason I haven't wanted to make this build is because the damage is just so easy set and forget and cheesy. But so many people have been asking for it and I'm going to finally give my input on the build and my little tweaks and I went with Magpar. Honestly, you could run this build on almost any class and it will shred targets. I felt Magpar was great because we're able to run a set that also increases our d damage over time and also increases our spammable. Like, it's just crazy. And Tempor, in my opinion, has the best healing in the entire game, best survivability. You have four haunts and a burst heal. And if that wasn't enough, your spammable and your execute heal you. Like, what does Templar not have? Like, oh. But how exactly do we get this cheese build in order? Stick around to the end and I'll show you exactly how. But before we get started, if you get the subscribe and like button, really goes a long way and I greatly appreciate it. So for those that don't know, I have made the swap over to PC and I am streaming the majority of the grind over on my Twitch. So if you guys can follow me on Twitch to watch the grind or maybe just stop by and say hello or hi. Honestly, you guys stopping by makes the grinding go by so fast. Like last time, like having five hour streams feels like 30, 20 minutes with you guys in chat. Like honestly, you guys make my day. Also support me on Patreon if you want to choose the first video of every month. But without further ado, let's sweep our way into the build. Okay, so first skill we do run is Extended Ritual. Honestly, I can't leave home without this skill. This is honestly what I would consider your flex spot. The reason I like this is a cleanse. Like a cleanse is unbeatable. Being able to remove like dots, negative effects from you is so good. But if you don't want it for whatever reason, then you could put on a, a CC there, focus charge right there. Gets a major protection and stuns it for three seconds. Up to you personally. I, I just love that. I just love the hot. I just love the purifier. Like that's only the reason I run it. Next skill is Living Dark. This is a, honestly a very, very cheesy heal. So we're going to run it, obviously. Basically, for 12 seconds, you heal for every time you take direct damage every half second. So you can basically proc this twice every second. And you also reduce their movement speed by 40%. Because why not? Next skill is Radiant Glory. This is a Pug's worst nightmare and a 1VXer's worst nightmare. It's cool when you slay Pugs with it, but it's annoying when you have like four or three of these on your death recap. <laughs> Basically, you can't dodge this beam. By the way, you, this beam is undodgeable, which is why I consider it a pug slayer. The only way to counteract this is either you bash the opponent or you block. More than likely, just block. You'll be able to survive it, hopefully. So yeah, the lower health they are, the more we melt. And we also heal for almost a quarter of the damage done. I mean, let's just pop our skill to get minor mending. Look at that, 24%. Oh, baby. Next skill is Rending Slashes. Honestly, this is a really nutty skill, especially paired with the Arena Weapon. Don't know what Arena Weapon? Stick around to the sets and I'll show you exactly what it is. Hits him twice, so we proc the Arena Weapon twice, and every dot. I like this more because it always puts hemorrhage on the build, and it also reduces their movement speed by 30%. Really good for the lockdown, but if you want to go with the other morph, Blood Craze, to just have all your front bar basically almost heal you, you can if you want. A little nasty. And obviously our spammable puncturing sweeps. We're most common for two as sweeps. This is the bread and butter spammable of a Templar. You basically sweep in front of you three times and you heal for almost half of that damage you do. With the minor mending, let's proc it again real quick. With the minor mending, we, do, we heal for 40% of the damage we do, which is just crazy to think about. And for ultimate, obviously Dawnbreaker's fighting. I mean, come on. This is a very hard hitting ultimate. Hit ridiculously hard in the cone in front of us. Also stuns the target. And if they're able to tell the tale of the Dawnbreaker, well, that dot's for sure gonna put them down. I mean, let's just buff it up real quick. Look at that, 13.7K Dawnbreaker. Not good, but look at that. They're almost a 20K dot. And this is unbuffed. We still haven't even proc our Mythic. And for our back bar, we do run Race Against Time. This is obviously just our snare meter that just happens to get Major Expedition and Minor Force. But honestly, this is what I consider a flex spot. If you want to run Race Against Time, I like that better because it is true form of mobility. When you pop that skill, you cannot get rooted and you cannot get snared. Like nothing can slow you and nothing can root you in place. You could put, however, Blood Mist or either one. I prefer Blood Mist to be able to move across. The only problem is you don't actually get immunity to snares. So if you're snared into oblivion, guess what? You can't move. You're not going to be able to move much. And if you're rooted, well, when you come out of the mist, you're still going to be rooted. Pop it against time. No one's catching you. Next skill is channel focus. This is basically just the Templar armor buff, which is also really good. This thing got crazy buffed this patch, which is just crazy to think about. Anytime you put the ring down, whether you're in the circle or not, you actually recover magic 
and whether you're within the circle or not again you heal for a certain amount which is tripled if you are within the ring so you no longer have to be in the ring to heal the only thing is if you are in the ring you heal for triple the amount which is just crazy to think about and next resolving vigor obviously this is our burst hot that also grants us minor resolve Next, we do run is Elemental Susceptibility, or most common referred to as Ally Sus. This is how we get Major Breach on the build, basically almost getting 6k armor shit on the target, putting these status effects on the target, and this is also how we proc our arena weapon, our back bar, which is just insane pressure, burning chills and cuss, and we all know what happens when you put chilled on an opponent with an ice staff, which we do have equipped. You put Minor Brittle on the target, making them take 10% bonus damage from crits, which is just crazy to think about. Next, we do run Honor the Dead. This is obviously our burst heal, heals us a lot. Also gives us a nice refund of magic over time, which is really good if we're below 75% health. Please run this morph. Do not run Breath of Life. Breath of Life has been gutted into oblivion. It's so sad to see it go. But honestly, Honor the Dead is just better sustain, good heal. Breath of Life is only good if you're expecting to a full heal. And even then, I probably still wouldn't even run it. Honor the Dead all the way. And for our back bar, obviously ultimate, Temporal Guard, just for that simple passive. While sliding, gave minor protection. All right, but enough of that. Let's go over the stat sheets. All right, so for our stat sheets, we're going to pop a simple spell, create a spell damage pop. And we're also going to be proccing our stats real quick. Keep our stats going. So for this, there are two stat sheets, depending on what mythic you run. So for the stat sheets, we're mostly going to be going over death dealers. But there, I will show a little bit of the sea serpent one if you do prefer that one. I prefer death dealers just being able to move at full speed. Let's check it out real quick. Keep our stats going, make sure. Now our max mag over 25.6k, max health over 33k, which actually can increase if we run the gold food, and our max ammo over 18k, mag recub over 1400, our stam recub is shy of 1000. Honestly, our recubs can actually go up a little bit higher since we do have access to 150 magicka and stamina recovery with a negative status effect from our CP. So this can go up, and you might look a little low for the mag recub, you have to realize we're a Templar with a rune that gives us magic back. We're spec heavily into reduced mag costs. So that's where our sustain comes from, reduced mag cost. And obviously our race is really good for that too. Now our fully proc spell damage real quick. Make sure everything's buffed up. Look at that, our spell damage is just shy of 5,100. Our spell crit is at 39.2%. Our penetration is at 3,500. Might look a little low, but they realize we do have access to major breach and potential minor breach. And we also do have the power that is Balor's. And I'm speaking of it, let's just check it out real quick. Look at that, with full Balor's over 5,800 weapon and spell damage and our penetration over 15k. With my major and minor breach up, we're basically pushing over 24k penetration. Now our resist on our back bar real quick. Spell resist over 29.2k. This actually can be boosted up by an extra 2k because of our race, which I'll go into a little bit when we go over the race. Our physical resist is just shy of 25k and our crit resist is also just shy of 2100. For the attributes, I do have 32 points in the mag and 32 points in health. I felt like this was a good, you know, medium. Honestly, if you want some more mag or you want some more health, you can honestly just move them around however you please. For the food, we do run Jewels of Mystery, saying that purple food is perfectly fine. For the Mundus, we do run the Shadow. I felt like our crit was super high, that the Shadow was just perfect. But if you want to run the Thief, perfectly fine. I'm not going to yell at you for that one. But if you are having more sustain issues, you could run the Atro. But honestly, I felt like the Shadow or the Thief are your main go-to. And obviously we are a stage three vampire for one simple, simple passive. Undeath, the lower health we are, the tankier we become. And for my race, I am a Breton. Honestly, in my opinion, Breton is hands down the best open world mag race out there. We get access to Gift of Madness, increase our max mag by 2K, Spell Tumen, we get over 2300 spell resist, which can be doubled if afflicted with burning chills or concussed. And with all the mag DKs and LE subs running around, we're basically gonna have this permanently up. And if that wasn't enough, a passive on top of a passive. Increase our mag recap by 130. And for our most juicy passive of them all, Magicka Mastery. This is the cost of all our mag abilities by 7%. This is basically almost negating the fact that we're a stage three vampire. So you can just see that Breton is just super invested into max mag and mag sustain. Like it's crazy. Some great alternatives. Khajiit would be really good. We do have high crit on this build. Dark Elf could be okay. Honestly, I'd kind of maybe stay away from everything else. All right, but enough of that. Let's go with the sets now. And for the monster set we do run, the powerhouse that is Balorx. I mean, Balorx is just 
one of the best open world monster sets out there being able to save up all that ultimate being able to get to 500 weapon of spell damage and over 11k penetration is just insane because when you drop your ultimate that's it you're committing to the damage you're committing to your burst and honestly battle works especially that penetration it's gonna for sure put them down but some great alternatives if you want to run marsalock you can run marsalock you could run roxa the warp that's honestly a really good one if you want more sustain so for the build, we do actually run two-piece training. Weird, I know, right? We do run two-piece training. The reason we do run two-piece training is because we do have access to two slots available. So why not two slot two training? You might be wondering, why not run one training and one Druid's Braid? The only thing about Druid's Braid is the max health is reduced. I think it's like 1,250 or something. You actually get more bang for your buck by running two-piece training. Trust me, just, just, just trust me, okay? Two-piece training bunch of max mag and a bunch of max health really really good and for the main set we do run deadly honestly deadly was was really deadly on the build <laughs> like <laughs> uh bad joke this the set was very deadly and honestly was melting people like the amount of damage this set provided was just insane this is a dot plot and this thing was just perfect for the build two to four piece two lines of weapon of spell damage and a line of crit beautiful but the five piece increases our damage done with damage over time and channeled abilities by 15%. If you didn't know this, our sweeps and our radiant proc this, and obviously our dots from our arena weapons will actually double dip with, it's just so much damage and pressure. But some great alternatives, you could run Order's Wrath, you could run Rallying Cry, you could run Mars or His Sap, honestly up to you. I prefer Deadly because the amount of damage you did was just insane with this. So for this build, we do run One Piece Mythic, and what Mythic is that? Honestly, there are two options. I prefer Death Dealer's Feet. If you want to run Sea Serpent, you can run Sea Serpent. The only problem is that Snare is really, really annoying. I prefer Death Dealer's. Being able to get stacks of 88 Mag, Stam, and Health, stacking up to 30 times. That's over 2,500 Mag, Health, and Stam you get right there from this one Mythic. Unfortunately, we couldn't run Marking because it actually doesn't double proc well in this build. So Death Dealer's was the next best bet. But if you want, you could run Sea Serpents. Only thing is, I don't really like the snare. Now for our weapons, we do run arena weapons for our front bar and our back bar. But what exactly are those arena weapons? Pretty sure you can pretty much guess. But for those that don't know, for the front bar, we do run the Masters Perfected Dual Wield. Obviously, non-perfected, perfectly fine. The only thing the perfected version does is grant you 2.5% crit. That's it. Regardless whether perfected or not, the main thing, Twin Slash just deals over 1,600 damage on the initial hits and bleed if you didn't know this anytime you rend you actually hit them twice so you double proc this with the initial hit of rending and every bleed take procs this like it's just insane pressure you can put this on multiple targets set and forget and it's just so much pressure it's, it's unbelievable and for our back bar we do run the vatron perfected eye staff obviously non-perfected perfectly fine the only thing the perfected version does is it grants you almost 1200 offense pen that's it which is basically not very useful since on our back bar we're being defensive anyway so not perfected perfectly fine the main thing when you cast weakest elements basically at least that's the morph you tether you and your target together for 10 seconds while the tether persists every second you deal either flame shock or frost damage which increases by one percent each tick of damage it does up to 20% bonus damage. The thing I didn't know about this, thank you Trump Graham for telling me this, is that this is an AOE tether. So if there's Joe Bob, if you're finding like two or three Joe Bobs, Joe Bob number one, you have him tethered. If Joe Bob number two is in the middle of the tether between you two, you actually do two, you actually do d damage to both of them and you actually get two stacks, getting 2% bonus damage. So that's how you're able to get to 20% bonus damage, which is just insane. Last for 10 seconds, 10 second cooldown. So you can basically have almost 100% uptime. And this, trust me, this thing can ramp very, very high. All right, so the way we run it. So for the front bar, I do run the Master's Perfected Dual Wield, double daggers. On the main hand, Nernhorn, please make it Nernhorn. It makes a difference with an Azor Stam enchant. Good for the stance the same, but mostly be there to be able to proc Minor Breach on the build. And on the off hand, we do run a Poison Damage enchant. Really good for proccing the status effect Poison, which is just another dot on the build, and charge, just to guarantee that we're always proccing those status effects on the target. But if you want, you could run Sharpen. Honestly, really nice. For the back part, we do run the Vatron Perfected Ice Staff. Obviously non-perfected, perfectly fine. With double dot poisons. Yes, double dot poisons. You can either craft them yourself or you can just get the crown ones that I have right here. With the bending, obviously, because tankiness is next to godliness. And for the body, we do run a little 
wizardry on this. So it's a little weird, trust me. Might be calling witchcraft on this. I do run three light, three medium, one heavy. Yes. Unfortunately, deadly is a medium set and the only thing I could do, I wanted three light on the build and it was the only way because you have to have three medium on the build with deadly. It's the only way to make it work. So trust me, this is how I made it work. So for the armor, we do run a light Balor's helm, heavy chest of the training, a light shoulders of Balor's, a light sash of training, and medium hands, legs, and feet of deadly. And for the enchants, if you can, trash that all the pieces. And if you can't do that, trash that the big pieces. What I mean by that is head, chest, and legs. And if you can't do that, max mag is perfectly fine. Just adjust your health attributes at the end. And for our traits, six and pen, one reinforce. Yes, six and pen, one reinforce. The only reinforce I have is a heavy chest of the training reinforce and the rest in pen but if you want some well fitted go ahead that's what i like about builds we fit to our play style and for the jewelry we do run a necklace and ring of deadly and a ring of death dealer's feet because it only comes in a ring duh two reduced mag cost with bloodthirsty and one infused weapon of spell damage preferably that grants mag recov honestly i felt like this was a really great way i want to sustain on the build but i didn't want to sacrifice too much damage put to reduce cost and some bloodthirsty you do some crazy damage with your radiant and obviously full infused weapon of spell damage in chat just to be able to buff up our damage and our heals which we do have a ridiculous amount on, our, on this build but for those that do want to run sea serpent over death dealers all you do put a, another deadly ring and then put a sea serpent necklace and there you go to reduce mag cost with bloodthirsty and then one infused weapon of spell damage and for the food simple jewels of mistral Gives a lot of max health and recover everything. But obviously, if you got deep pocket or don't mind spending a little extra, or Zafka's smoke bear hunch gives you about 400 more max health and slight more recover. And for the pots, simple spell crit and spell damage pots. Honestly, this was just perfect for the build. The reason we want major sorcery is because Templars do have access to minor sorcery. So 10% spell damage from being a Templar, 20% from her pot, really nice. 12% crit for both bars, and obviously a burst of mag and mag recov. Just honestly, just the perfect pot for this build. You can either craft them yourself, or you can just buy the Alliance spell drop pots. The ones from the AP vendors, perfectly fine. They do the exact same thing. I actually do have quite a bit on this character. All right, but enough of that, let's go over the CP now. All right, so for our blue CP, we're doing our fighting finesse, increase your critical damage, critical healing, focus many, increase our healing done with single target heals, thought materials, increase our damage done with damage over time effects, and ironclad reduce our damage taken from direct damage attacks and for our red cp typical seal of approval red hex cp celebrity increases our movement cp by 10 percent honestly in my opinion the best cp in the entire game survival instincts while for through the status effect our core combat skills cost less pain's refuge the more net effects we have acting on us the tanker we become and sustained by suffering when affected with a negative effect increase our health mag and stam recoup by 150. and for the green cp doesn't ever really matter Rationer, Liquid Efficiency, Gifted Rider, and Steed's Blessing. But all right, cool beans, that's the build. Hope you guys did enjoy it. Honestly, this, 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 is, this, is, just, this is just too much damage. I, I don't even know how this is even. The Master's Dual Wield with the Vatron Destro is just a, the most disgusting combo you will ever see. I've held back so much on it, but so many people have been asking for this. And I was like, you know what? I'll do the Master's Dual Wield Vatron build. And I'll do it on the Templar. Why not? Let's try it on Templar. Oh my. Things I was doing to player was just insane. Templar, in my opinion, has the best survivability out there, which is just a crazy thing about. Literally, our spammable and execute heals us. We have two hots on the front bar, and we have three heals on the back. Like, what? What is this? Templar is just insane. But as always, for those legends, still stick around to the end of the video. I greatly do appreciate it. Hit the subscribe and like button. It goes a long way, and I greatly do appreciate it. Also, for those that don't know, I have made the switch to PC. I am grinding super hard. So if you ever want to support me over there on Twitch to see how the grind is going, or just say hi, honestly. Doing the grind is a little boring, but when you guys stop by in the stream and talk to me, honestly, you guys just make that stream. You make that you make that five hour stream feel like a 20 minute stream. Like you guys, you guys really make my day. Also, support me on Patreon if you ever want to choose the first video of every month. But as always, you know the rest. Like the video if you liked it. Comment your thoughts or experience with the build. Also, anything I might have missed out, we'll be what you do next. Subscribe for more. But most importantly, stay Zergen. Quick shout out to Nerdy.